So if you are not talking, then please mute it. And then um, shut it. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll start taking minutes. All right, so Dan, do you want to talk about the financials? Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, just as a, uh, generally speaking, uh, the lab is in good shape. Um, we've got a, uh, a comfortable, uh, reserve, uh, built up in, in the, um, in the bank account. Um, the, you know, as I've cautioned for a, a little while now, um, you know, our, our expenses have been down because of the lack of attendance. There's not so much electricity being used. Uh, the AC is not being run as much. So I do expect that to, to start to increase as we, it's all right, um, That's what as we have we Michelle more for. people back in and the like, lab. Damn, um, but we're, you know, but we're doing really fine on uh, money right now. Uh, I just don't ever like feeling too comfortable with it. Um, I think we're right at, we stayed even. I think we gained a member, lost a member, or well, I don't think, I know we gained a member, lost a member uh, last month. Uh, so we're maintaining membership. This um, this last month, uh, definitely it appeared that there's been a, uh, certainly a tick up in the uh, interest in uh, from potential new members in the lab, which is pretty exciting. Um, and um, that's a, that's about it. Um, all right, so we were, we've been talking about starting up uh, classes for members. Um, I was going to do the wood burning class, but I'm not sure if anybody's actually interested. I can put out like a interest form to see if anybody is wanting to do that, because most of the time uh, it was just non-members that were coming to those classes. Um, we have been getting questions about 3D printing classes and laser classes for new members. So if there's anyone that wants to teach that or might be able to um, volunteer to do that or help out, let us know. Um, and then we're possibly starting up open house uh, and open makes. We are planning to do like a cookout kind of kickoff for members. I think we were talking, I can't remember if we we're talking September, August or September. Um, and then for a member, um, sorry, after that, then we do open makes uh, for members only, and then that member can bring a guest, and then we'll do with the general public after the official kickoff. So, um, one of the questions that we we're wanting to ask the membership, uh, like, what do you want to see Family Lab do in in the, this future, this new future for us? Anybody want to chime in or? I. I like, like me teaching on the future direction, grand scheme of things. Are we talking about the next like month or two as we kind of stare down the barrel of Delta? Yes. Cause that's, that's kind of what I'm largely concerned about having looked at the agenda. Uh, so I'll, I'll leap right into the fray with the COVID thing since, since you gave me an opening. Um, <laughs> what has discussion been like considering the rising numbers the fact that Florida's got like one in five new COVID cases, that kind of thing, uh, with starting open house, open makes, um, inviting the general public that we don't know if they're vaxxed or not. Hmm. Yeah, so that like we started talking about- Loaded question for the board. Yeah, we started talking about like doing these openings and then all of a sudden we're going, mm, okay, things are happening again. So yeah, we're just kind of getting some feedback from you guys. So this is all kind of a to be determined, but this is what we've been kind of hoping for. I don't know if any other board members want to jump in here or not, but. Yeah, um, it's what we've been talking about, but of course we're still taking things week by week as the numbers change and realizing that once something gets rolled back, it's hard to reinstitute it. So we're taking it slowly in that way. I was kind of hoping to hear someone say that. I kind of figured that was the case. Hence my, my next part in the agenda was that the mass policy has at this point technically been suspended for those who were vaccinated. Um, 
but we're still recommending it for if you're in close proximity of, of others for a long period of time. And then membership should be prepared for changes regarding COVID in all of these policies because things keep changing and getting worse, getting better, getting worse again. So, yeah, we're kind of in limbo at this point. Um, all right, do you guys want me to keep going or does someone else want to continue with the agenda? I'll kick in a comment. Uh, Katie's unable to, to hop on the meet, but I'm live transcribing in Slack. Uh, and she had a comment. Uh, when it comes to open makes, maybe masked open makes of members uh, for like a smaller group, 1520, but maybe not strangers yet. Because um, we pretty much know amongst ourselves and, and masked would be safer. I added that last bit, but. Yeah, uh, we are definitely staying members. Really, the question, the plans are to start opening some events uh, at the space for members. Uh, the exact time frame for non or members and their guests. So you can still bring your spouse, you can still bring your kid, but general public still sometime in the future. We were hoping soon-ish, but yeah, everybody's seen the news and the case numbers. Yeah, fair enough. So um, I do want to jump back just a little bit for that comment of what does the membership want to see Lab do in the future? Uh, that's a question to all of you. And remember how we just heard that the bank account is kind of comfortable? Well, the kinds of things we're looking at is, hey, we just got some new printers for the th a couple of new 3D printers. It's that kind of stuff. We're asking, what kinds of things do you want to see at the lab? So we've already upgraded well, some new 3D printers, but what other areas need attention now that we've got a little bit of discretionary funding? Unless someone immediately leaps in. I, I have a thought. I'll keep talking, and then I'll go back on mute. Um, we, I would love to see us do maybe, I would say events, but something community building, whether that's deciding on a project or, or I don't know, I guess the cookout thing, but COVID. Um, and I know it doesn't so much relate to discretionary funding as much as it does with the fact that we kind of, always recently have had a community problem and the pandemic hasn't helped that. Um, I definitely can't tell you our new members uh, or probably even the people who've left. Um, so kind of long-term planning for some nice fluffy community building might be a good idea. Next. I think Mike, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I was going to say that we should probably look at um, general facility maintenance items that are beyond the scope of like volunteer work. I'm not talking about light bulbs, but I'm talking about like replacing the carpets, uh, looking at redoing the uh, the hard floor surfaces in different parts of the lab. Um, it's just you know it's been it's been quite a number of years, and and all the surfaces are looking very worn. You know, it's something that. I don't know. I, I find to be, you know, kind of a, an important thing to uh, attract new members is, you know, a clean, inviting space. Um, but obviously, I'm I'm just one person's opinion. So a, a, a effectively a fresh coat of paint on many surfaces, either literal <laughs> or figurative. Yeah, yeah, paint on the on the floors and the walls and the carpet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just just kind of a, any, even we could even hire a, a cleaning service for a day to come through and like clean the door jams and the door handles and stuff. You know, just just pay them for one day to come through and give everything a good uh, professional deep clean. That, that's not a terrible idea. Once, well, <laughs> I've been through the lab recently. Um, that's a little scary. It's going to take a little work to straighten up. But once we get to a straightening up point, um, it might yeah, it might be nice to put down a couple bucks for like a scrub. Like our floors are nasty, quality nasty. 
yeah, the, the epoxy coating that's in the um, like the Fab Lab and in the um, the laptop bar area is is starting to come up in places. It's just kind of exceeded its useful life, um, which was about a five year coating. Uh, and being that we're you know a little past that now, it's it, it's just time. It's just it's nothing that anyone's done wrong. It's just just time. Sure. Yeah, no, I think um, I think that the idea of the uh, uh, the cleaning and refresh is um, of uh, some of those um, uh, things is a good idea. Um, we'll have to uh, I'm not quite sure how best to go about prioritizing them or determining what is worth doing. Um, if anybody has any suggestions for that, please, you know, uh, help us out. <laughs> or alternatively, remain really, really quiet. But, you know. Okay, I'm pretty sure nobody wants to hear me continue to talk, so it's someone else's turn. Well, I was gonna say, if someone wants to continue with the agenda, it's like really tough for me to look at the agenda and then flip back to the to the meeting minutes and take notes and talk at the same time because I can't focus that well. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll, I guess I'll pick up at the next spot on the agenda. Um, so we've covered the, what do we wanna see in the future? Mask policy, um, still tentatives, watching what's going on. Um, Maker Fair is still scheduled for mid-November. Um, what will the Family Lab involvement look like? Tables and so on. Anyone? Bueller? I hate to be the person I'm muting again. Um, I just keep getting there first. I think a lot of it's going to depend on where we are with respect to COVID. I know that makes it hard to plan, but are we going to want to know. sit and camp out at tables? I guess it depends on Ian's setup, but I don't know. I mean, do we even know when they're planning to open uh, registrations yet? Because they haven't yet. Uh, as of last week, I had not seen anything. I have not checked this week. I. I know it's going to be very soon uh, that registration is going to open. Um, I don't know how many, um, how full of an event they're expecting. At at one point earlier this year, it was going to be a uh, somewhat scaled back event. Um, I don't know if that's still the case. I can find out. My my wife is still on the uh, the planning board for uh, for Maker Fair, and I can find out and uh, kind of report back in Slack soon as as far as what the what the insider info is on when and how and how many. That would be helpful. Um, so I guess we'll leave that up in the air for a little bit longer as the rest of the world is still kind of um, Now, so any other things anyone wants to discuss? Um, Miscellaneous stuff, show and tell, anything? It's been a slow I'll slide month. halfway back a step. It might be worth planning for Maker Fair in case things get drastically better. Um, in which case, that kind of brings you back around to the beginning of the question you asked. Mm -hmm. But it would be nice to see a big group involvement if life gets safe again. When? When life gets, it gets safe again? We have to believe there's a light well, at the well, end of the tunnel uh, and it's not an ongoing right, if, train. If in time, I think was what I was thinking, but yes, uh, if we can successfully dodge the train. <laughs> like, if if we're asked again to do the the soldering, uh, that would also be, you know, neat to see who would be able to help out with that.
Right. So if anyone has any comments on the Maker Fair stuff, definitely throw it in the Maker Fair channel, which I think still exists. If not, it'll get reopened. Um, otherwise, any other discussion or show and tell. Normally, this is where I jump in, but it's been a slow month at work. Lots of longer projects. <laughs> I, uh, I learned something new. I learned a new skill. Um, I learned how to spray uh, automotive paint um, in a larger capacity uh, over the last couple of weeks. Um, I wasn't spraying it on automotive items, um, but it's the same kind of catalyzed paint you would put on a vehicle. And I found out that not only can you spray it through a you know, big paint sprayer, you can also spray it through an airbrush. Um, and I have uh, Blackheart to thank, actually, for getting me into learning how to do airbrushing on things. Isn't an airbrush just a little paint sprayer? Yeah, kind of, but it's it's a little different just because the, the technique is different. Um, and the, the way you operate the gun is different. But yes, it's essentially the same idea. But uh, yeah, it, it's been it's been really helpful. Um, so thank you for kind of showing me the ropes, I guess, uh, about 20 something months ago. <laughs> it's been a while. And if you, uh, you I, have I to know, spray the things in a hurry. You've got to be really quick about cleaning it because um, okay. uh, it, it will catalyze in the airbrush. Okay. And that's much harder to clean out. I've also found that if you're trying to spray paint things in a hurry and you don't have like six hours to wait for each layer to dry, give each one about 20 minutes and then hit with uh, automotive wax seals each layer and actually works pretty well for um, like damage protection on it as well. Nice. Yeah, the, the cool part about this, uh, the, the catalyzed paint, um, is that it, it it dries within like 15 minutes, um, uh, essentially, you know, dried completely to the touch, not tacky or anything. Um, and it's like full strength in 24 hours, which is, which is great for some of the stuff we're doing. Hey. If Blackheart wants to do a class for airbrush, I would be one of your students, absolutely. Uh, I, I am terrible with an airbrush. Like, <laughs> I just use it as an alternative to having to get spray paint cans on small things like minis and such. Yes, but you're slightly more competent than the rest of the class. Yeah, the five minute rule. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Poor liquid paint and thing spray. <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, but there's also that whole getting the right consistency thing for the paint and what paints to use and... And what needle size. Yeah. There's a little bit more to it. Uh, yeah. I never got to the point of needle size and stuff. Most of what I learned was just uh, like the basics of make it the consistency of milk and... Yes, but like... is that skim milk or is that heavy <laughs> cream? There's a lot of different consistencies to milk. Oat milk? Coconut? <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Blackheart, maybe your knowledge and my knowledge combined, we could make something that resembles somewhat of a crash course in airbrushing. I'm maybe. Still in. It's, it's been about a year and a half now since I've actually done it because the world. <laughs> uh, for, for me, it's been about five days. <laughs> Fair enough. Of course, it was all one color. <laughs> so speaking of potential upcoming things, Blackheart, do you want to cover the upcoming events? Uh, I need to open up the doc. I'm sorry, I'm half working still. Where is our agenda? Uh, it's in the messages in the call. Yeah, it's in the very, very first one. There we go. Uh, yeah, okay, so... Are the dates correct? Did we confirm that now? Uh, yes, the dates have been corrected. OK, so our next board meeting will be on the 10th, 8 PM. Um, it should still be virtual, as far as I know, for our next board meeting uh, and next member meeting as well, which will be on the 17th. Um, we discussed Maker Fair already, which will be the 13th and 14th, and TBD on when the call for makers happens and what their rules are going to be, so we can figure out what we'll do with it. Uh, potentially an open make on the 16th for members and like family guests and that, a cook that week sometime that week yeah 
cookout on the 21st and public events potentially resuming on the 23rd unless things get worse because covid yeah and, all these dates are tentative at this point except for the the actual virtual meeting <laughs> yeah potentially an, an actual in-person open house on september 7th if things haven't burned down Uh, and then what was I doing with math? Okay. Um, well, okay, since we're kind of passing it around, I guess I'll go ahead and pick up at that point while Blackheart maths. <laughs> um, so um, we, um, Michelle, put something in the uh, awesome box for everyone for hanging in there. So thank you all for hanging in there. Uh, that is good to continue to do. And um, that actually kind of brings us to one of the most important uh, parts of the meeting. If our, uh, if our uh, new potential member hasn't like gotten tired of hearing us fumble around uh, through a meeting without our faithful president here, who is now here observing us, uh, running the show. <laughs> uh, we have someone to introduce. If they're here, is there a Mark N? Yeah, he's here. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Mark. Um, yep. Yeah, I'm interested in joining the, uh, the Family Lab. I was, uh, I joined the, um, the uh, Makerspace in Dallas. Uh, a few years ago, but um, I'm I'm here now since um, for for a country class at Lancer College, uh, and I finished finished about a couple weeks ago, and um, I'm working full time now. So it's interested in um, building building stuff and using the uh, tools and machines at the lab. And I think Michelle, did you was that you that gave me a tour? On Sunday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks again for um, for letting me in and uh, show me around. And and she is on mute. Sorry, I'm like trying to do a whole bunch of stuff at the same time. It's a dysfunctional meeting. But, um. Yeah. So, uh, hey, Mark. Uh, so, what sort of uh, what sort of stuff do you like to do? What or to make and uh, build? Well, right now, currently, um, I'm planning to uh, to convert a van into a to a van conversion into an uh, RV, and um, after that, I'm I'm um, interested interested in the um, the wood the wood shop the the CNC uh, wood machine and the laser machines and knife making uh, metal shop. That um, yeah. So, I don't have any um, specific things I like to make, but I just like to those stuff. That's why that's why I took the uh, carpentry class and see what what I can make. Sure, that sounds cool. Uh, so does what, anybody have any questions for Mark? Uh, what are you said you wanted to learn the laser and some woodworking tools? What are some things you can teach us? <laughs> oh, Michelle did. Um, I'm trying to think what I can teach. Remember, you just have to be five well, minutes ahead of the class. Okay. Have um, I might be able to talk about the event conversion after I finish. Has has anyone uh, uh, done a van conversion at the lab? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I know there was someone working on a bus conversion for a while, but oh. I don't think that went anywhere. Okay. Well, well. I mean, if you can successfully do that, 
you can teach someone here something. Okay. All right. And if you Deal. can't successfully do it, you can teach someone to not to not try something. <laughs> All right. Good, good suggestion, Dan. <laughs> yeah, I can teach them what to do or what not to do. Yeah, exactly. So thank you very much uh, for introducing. Unless anyone has any other questions for Mark, um, we'll continue on. I, I think uh, Tim uh, oh. has uh, that. Tim, have you introduced before? Yep. Uh, I've been to the lab, was, uh, was able to come into the lab and get a uh, overview of, of the lab itself. My area that I'm interested in is I do a lot of creative. Um, basically, if I, if I see something, I want to build it myself. I've done stained glass. I do currently am building um, devices for people that play pool. I build wood uh, holders for their cues, and I also um, create things out of plastic or acrylic for people to put on their sticks and things of this nature. So 3D printing is of interest and the cutting table uh, is also of interest as well. And the laser printer, or laser engraver. <clears throat> so those are some of the areas. They tell me I'm too noisy in my neighborhood. So <clears throat> I had to turn off the table saw. They just said, nope, gonna have it no more. So, uh, I uh, live in an RV and I have a uh, very nice workshop outside of my house, but they've kind of kiboshed all my noise. So I thought I might bring my noise to you. <laughs> <laughs> I like to share that way. <clears throat> so as far as anything that I can teach, I do teach um, quite a few things. But mainly, I can teach people how to do the fundamentals of stained glass, how to create, design, and work with stained glass. I decided that I wanted to, I saw people that when they play pool, they lean their sticks up against a, what, a table, right? Well, they have what's called a claw, and so I decided, well, shoot, I, those things are ugly. They're made out of plastic. So I created wood ones that are out of exotic woods and just recently had a uh, competition I was in and they sold like hotcakes. So that was exciting, but I got introduced to somebody that's doing laser uh, etching onto them and we've partnered up together on that. But honestly, I'd like to be able to venture out on my own uh, laser work as well. So that would be something of interest. But anybody wants to learn anything about anything that I know, I'd be more than happy to share. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think you'd probably yeah. find some interest in the stained glass thing. Yeah, no, it's stained glass is a lot of fun, but it's there's a lot of little things to understand on how to do it. My t shirt I'm wearing tonight is. I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. <laughs> but I think as a teacher, I think it's my job to figure out how to translate then some information into practicality. So I work very hard on doing it. And I very seldom have met people I don't like. That's good. That's it. <laughs> And I'm an old guy, 68 years old, starting a new business. So what's I'm your looking favorite? To, um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say that I'm uh, very interested in learning to do 3D and, and uh, laser work um, or etching. Also, uh, cutting table. I just... I got so much information in one spot I didn't know. Um, all the different things you had and 
uh, I'm very excited about becoming part of the group. Jamie, you had something? Michelle, did you just say something on mute? I saw your face move. No, I'm questioning what Mike is doing right now. <laughs> so do you have a favorite fandom? Uh, Star uh, Wars, Star Trek, any of those sort of things? Well, Marvel fan completely. Uh, was introduced to uh, the Marvel Universe through one of my friends. He was a character artist out at Disney. And he's been out there for several years now. He uh, drives characters of guests and uh, their animals and whatever else. So it's been quite an experience. But so I really, I really do enjoy that. And I'd like TV series like the show um, on Showtime Billions about a hedge fund operator and and all the nefarious things that go along with that. But I like I like the action adventure, for sure. Cool. Not necessarily geek level. <laughs> Although I enjoy geeks, I, I became a geek in 1969 into electronics. Went into the Navy and uh, was trained in electronics, came out and went to work doing electrical work as well. So it's a great merging of the two technologies. So I was kind of part of that uh, beginning, <clears throat> merging electrical into electronics so it's for me even at my age of being 68 this year um i'm always teaching other people on how to do things in electronics and uh showing them how easy it is they just have to get over their fear basically of screwing it up my grandson taught me that quite well he said i was trying to figure something out on the computer and buttons and I'm like what are you doing he said well if it don't break it's okay <laughs> you just figured out how it doesn't work you just keep on doing that until you figure it out and uh, so I that's sometimes that's in life what you do you try something you screw it up you figure out how it doesn't work and then you move forward I'd wager that most people at the lab are pretty good at making things stop working on command <laughs> Whether or not they can get it working again afterwards depends. Depends. Yeah. Well, that's have, that's the challenge, isn't it? Absolutely. Is to figure out the unfixable, and then then be able to teach it to other people so they don't have the same problem. I, I mean, I there's not it. a lot of fixing it once the magic smoke gets let out. Well, true. True. Now, when I was in electronics, they started us out on trend on tube, building a tube radio and then building a transistor radio and then learning how to tweak it. So pretty interesting stuff. That's great. Uh, well, thank you for uh, coming and introducing if no one else has any questions. Um, okay, so that's it for uh, our a, uh, the official um, agenda. Um, we can